Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Arctic Freezer 50TR. What it is is basically a cooler in a push-pull configuration. It also has addressable RGB lighting on there, which to my knowledge is a first for Arctic. I might be wrong, but I don't recall seeing any RGB on any of their other products. So hopefully it's got performance and it looks good as well because they're known for the performance but they've never really gone down the route of making them nice and flashy where obviously we'll see if this looks like Las Vegas or not when it lights up. This is designed and will work only on the STR4 motherboards. It should also work on STR-X4 as well which is a new Threadripper motherboard. So unless you've got a Threadripper CPU and motherboard this isn't going to work for you unfortunately. So this came out just before the third generation uh, Threadrippers came out so to my knowledge it's not been tested on the new Threadrippers. We're going to put it through its testing to see how it does. It's got a TDP of 300 watts where if I'm right the Threadrippers are around about 280 so it should be able to cope with the new Threadrippers. Surprisingly this thing has got a TDP higher than a lot of water coolers on the market so it will be interesting to see how it performs. I'm going to do a little bit of overclocking as well with the Threadripper which we're going to be using the 3960X which is a 24 core 48 thread CPU. Surprisingly the retail price of this seems quite cheap considering it's for a Threadripper. We're seeing online at the moment it's going for around about 60 UK pounds and I've put some links in the description for you if you wish to buy. Okay let's have a look at this Arctic Freezer 50TR box. As you can see here it's got their logo, nice picture of the item with the RGB lighting on. It's got addressable RGB apparently according to that. It's got your two year limited warranty. It's got a barcode for scanning obviously to get manuals and stuff like that. Tells you the model Freezer 50TR, dual tower, CPU cooler for Threadripper with ARGB. That's addressable uh, red, green, blue lighting basically. Uh, it's designed for Ryzen Threadripper approved. Doesn't mention it's compatible with anything else. I don't think it is. Uh, I think this is for Threadripper only. Uh, it would be nice for it to say Threadripper only or something along that. Uh, so compatible with Aura Sync, you've got your Gigabyte um, RGB as well, MSI's version and ASRock's version as well, pretty straightforward. Top of the box says the Carbon Neutral Company. This side of the box gives you all your different languages. On the, this side you've got basically pictures showing you how it works and how it basically connects up and so forth and it works in a push-pull configuration Pre uh, pressure optimized fans, we've reviewed some of their P-series fans before and they're pretty good, these look like they're slightly different design but probably in the heart it's pretty much similar and you can actually see the dual um, towers there without all the plastics all over the outside so you can actually see what it actually looks like underneath on this side here you've got the full specifications including your TDP which is 300 watts which is strange because it has got a little sticker there what's gone over so let's just have a look what it says underneath that so apparently underneath the sticker it says 250 so was it a printed mistake was it originally designed for 250 or oh, they did 250 and thought oh that'd be plenty and then they knew the new Ryzen was coming out and they thought right let's see if it works on that and it does and they stuck a sticker over what says 300 watt. Who knows, hopefully it's just a typer. Um, so you've got heat pipe on there, tells you about those direct touch 6mm times 8, it's uh, aluminium fins uh, on there. Uh, it's an MX4 thermal compound which is uh, usually good. It gives you the full dimensions on there so the width is 149.5 millimeters, the height is 165 millimeters uh, and the depth is 147.8 uh, millimeters as well. So that's uh, should be okay. So the basics is it's 150 millimeters uh, each way apart from the height which is about 165. You can see on here and they've specifically compared it with the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper uh, on there and they're saying that basically it's running uh, 
according to them, around about 13 degrees cooler uh, than the Cooler Master uh, Wraith Ripper, which is an interesting claim. On the bottom of the box, you just got barcodes and you've got this nice RGB effect. Otherwise, let's open it up and see what we've got. So, it doesn't seem to be any seal on this box. Let's see if we can get it open. We're ripping it to pieces. Here we go. So the first thing you get on top is basically their manual, so you have to scan that with a phone to get your manual up, I suppose that saves the money printing it, and secondly, on top of that, it also saves them, um, save the environment and more carbon neutral and this, that and the other. Uh, and then you've got a thanks for choosing, um, why they've done two, why they can put that and that together to make one, and then it would have been saving even more of the environment, but who knows. Uh, first bit is just cardboard, Ooh, dropping it everywhere, just to hold the central bit in place. So actually the main cool of it is actually a lot smaller than the box, so this outer packaging, I'm hoping it's, it's just outer packaging, you've got another box inside. Let's hope it's not inside another box, it ends up being half the size. Um, but let's have a look what's inside this one. Okay, it's in a plastic bag, which is not the best thing for the environment these days, so hopefully they're easily recyclable, these bags. And you can see the product there, there's nothing else in there, to be honest, in that box, that is it. So let's open that bag and see what we've got. So it does look like a bit of a beast, size. Wise, it reminds me of the Be Quiet Dot Rock Pro 4, I think it was. So let's take off all this cardboard and see exactly what we've got. So let's just put the cooler to one side first. Inside here, it looks like you've got your brackets and your MX4. So the basics is you just got two brackets, MX4 and the cooler. That's it. There's no nothing complicated about this. The fans are already fitted. Um, so that's very good news. Um, so you don't have to mess about. If you have to remove the fans to fit, um, that's going to be another story. I'm guessing that may have to happen, but uh, we'll find that out in a few minutes. So the cooler itself, you can see the base there. That's obviously what's going to go on top of your Threadripper CPU. Um, doesn't really cover the whole of the CPU. Um, it would have been nice to have slightly bigger base so it did actually fully cover it. And the heat pipes itself form the base. So you can feel a slight ripple between them. So best to make sure you do put the uh, ample thermal paste on there. Um, it's not the smoothest, not the shiniest, not the neatest to be honest bottom I've ever seen on a cooler. Let me see if I can look at the instructions for this using my phone because I've no idea how to open this product up. Now you can see all the heat pipes there and then running through that side but you can't see anything from the top you just see that plastic effect where I'm guessing that's where your RGB is going to be running as well as there. Okay, I've scanned the QR code, it's asking me what language, so I'm going to say English. I accept uh, your cookie terms, it's giving me two things, packaging content or AMD socket STR4, so I'm guessing that's what we need. You've got preparation, you've got installation, and then you've got watch video so let's go to preparation so, okay i was right it does look like these plastic bits do pull out somewhat and then uh, the central fan will lift which comes with your rgb lighting and fan controls there as well so you can see a bit more of the device and that's how you get to your screws okay but it was nice for them to actually pack it all together so you can see, and it does come with pieces quite easily once you know actually how to do it. Tells you how to apply the MX4, then installation, tells you to put the brackets on the CPU, which we'll do in a few minutes, put the cooler on top, screw it in, 
and then put the central bit on uh, make sure it's clipped in plug your fans in and that's pretty much it there is also a video on there which shows you how to install it if you wish one thing to bear in mind with this cooler which i nearly forgot is that you have to make sure you've got memory which is uh not too big to fit in the socket um when i say too big to fit in the socket i actually mean too big to fit underneath the cooler um i can't see anywhere on the box where it actually says on the actual cooler that you need memory under a certain physical size uh but you do uh, unfortunately so this is one of the disadvantages about this generally you'll struggle finding anything over 3200 megahertz which will physically fit on the board which is a bit of a shame in reality uh because the board will support up to 4,400 megahertz memory. We have tested it with that much memory and it does give it a performance boost, especially in creative work like encoding and stuff like that, uh, by as much as probably around about a 3 or 4% difference, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're spending a small fortune on a processor and everything else, 3 4% is still a good increase. And if you're doing a large video especially 4k it can save you quite a bit of time but unfortunately according to arctic that the thread ripper cpus are optimized for 3200 megahertz just because something's optimized for it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna uh, not be any better if you put better memory in and from our testing which you can see in our previous review you will find there is a difference So we've put in some memory now, it is Kingston HyperX 3200 megahertz memory, which has got a lower profile uh, than the other memory we were using. Okay, so once you've got your cooler in place, which we've pre-applied the bottom with paste, you then basically just screw it into place. I suggest you do one side slightly and then do the other side a little bit once they're in place there we go so that's now gripped in which is good news so you can't see much of my hands from this angle but basically it's just screwing these two screws into place once that's done you can get your other fan or the central fan and that basically just pushes straight down on top of the unit that's one side and that seems to be in and then you connect up your power or when i say your power you connect up your fans to your PWM socket on your motherboard which is also known as the fan socket it's a four pin one and then you connect up your RGB header turn it on and we have lights so that's a good sign okay so down to testing you can see here we compared it against a Cooler Master Wraith Ripper as well as a water cooler unit as well from Cooler Master. Uh, for idle temperatures pretty much the same. Uh, the Arctic Freezer when under full load does perform a lot better than the Wraith Ripper. Slightly behind the water cooler which is to be expected considering it's over twice the price. Um, the same again uh, basically on 100% fan load. It does outperform the Wraith Ripper and again it is a cheaper value than the Wraith Ripper is. Even though the Arctic Free Desert outperforms the Wraith Ripper, uh, it does with a sacrifice, and that is the 2 decibels louder. Um, but saying that, 2 decibels is neither the ear or there. You probably wouldn't notice it under normal circumstances. Also, the other downside is in comparison to the Wraith Ripper, that does allow up to 45 millimeters memory um, and possibly even a little bit more um, where unfortunately the Arctic is only 37 and a half millimeters. 
So in basics, would I recommend this product? Yeah, I would recommend it as long as your memory is the right size and you're not looking to go down the route of water cooling. If you're going down the, um, the route of what's best, water cooling is the best option. It will give you more room to put bigger memory modules in if you're wanting. Uh, and overall, you'll get a better experience and also even be a little bit quieter depending on the cooler. I'm not 100% sure that Arctic actually know how to market this because they said in an email to us it was industrial based, that's why it did not have much room for the memory. But if it's industrial based, why have you got loads of RGB lighting on it? And to my knowledge, industrial based stuff does not need all the fancy stuff like that. One issue we did have with the cooler was when we wanted to actually remove the cooler and replace it for doing another test. And the problem was is you have to take the center fan out. And to do that, you have to undo the clips from the bottom. But with the graphics card in the way, you were unable to get to the clips at the bottom. But also, we couldn't remove the graphics card because the cooler was blocking the clip on the PCI Express slot. So we had to do lots of bending and so forth to try and get it out of the actual socket, the graphics card, and then um, get the cooler out. So that was a little bit fiddly and potentially dangerous, especially when you're talking about a board which is going to be well over £400 and processors which can cost well over a £1,000 as well.